In this clip, we'll learn how to create shaders inside Mari that mimic the shaders we'll use in our final rendering package. Okay, great. So I'm dealing again with our fresh project here inside of Mari, and we're going to start a conversation around shading networks. Because inside of Mari, the shading network that you're going to be using is probably a little different than the network you would use inside of Maya. Now, just like inside of Maya, we're going to create a shader or a material that is going to control the look of our asset here on our Mari canvas. Now, you'll want to go ahead and open up the shaders palette if you don't have that open currently. Again, you can find that under the view menu and palettes or just simply by right clicking on your toolbars and making sure that your shaders palette is currently open. Now, you'll notice here at the top portion of the palette, we have things like current channel, current layer and below, current layer and current paint target. Now, these are all different viewing modes for what we're looking at on the canvas. Now, our project doesn't have any shaders in it as of right now, but every project you create is going to have at least one channel and at least one layer. We're going to continue our conversation around channels and layers in the next clip, but let me come over here and we're going to simply create a shader. Now we can come over and click on this little button right here, and you'll notice that we get a, a, a large drop down of an assortment of different shaders that we can use here inside of Mari. These top four are sort of basic shading models that you can utilize. However, if you're working inside of Maya, it's possible that you could be using V-Ray to render out your scene, you could be using Arnold, which ships with Maya 2017, or you could be using something like Redshift. Now, if you're using Mari for game development, maybe you want to mimic something like the Unreal Shader. We're actually going to use Arnold, so let's go ahead and create this AI Standard Shader. Now, this is a powerful new GLSL shader that comes with Mari. So, it is meant to mimic the AI standard shader and all the inputs that we would be working with with that shader here inside of Mari. Okay, there's our new AI standard shader. And you can see clearly on my canvas, the look of this mesh has now changed. Uh, we had sort of a gray mesh that had a, a moderate amount of reflection on it. And now it looks very much like a Lambertian style shader. Now, if you're familiar with the default settings for the AI standard, it does very closely resemble a Lambert shader. Let's go ahead and come over here below and let's start to look at the various inputs. So you can see here there is a expandable rollout right here that has all of the various inputs. Now, inside of Mari, a channel gets connected to an input when we want to create a texture to drive that input. Now, if we wanted to create a texture to drive something like diffuse color, we would select the appropriate channel here. Now, you can see there is the diffuse channel right there, and that's the only channel in my project that was created at the time the project was created. I'm not going to select that just yet, um, but let's go ahead and scroll down here. You'll notice here that there is a button to the right of each input, and that button will allow you to create a new channel, and it will automatically connect that channel to the input next to it. So let's go ahead and scroll down. You'll notice here that we have a variety of inputs, and these should look fairly familiar to you if you've used the AI standard shader. But what I want to get to down here is down here below. So you can see here we have some options down below the different channel inputs. Now again, these attributes right down here are going to mimic the AI standard over inside of Maya. So if, for example, we didn't want to use a texture map to drive the diffuse color, we could come in here and we could choose a color right here. Let's go ahead and just click on that little swatch and you'll notice that Mari's select color window opens up. We can come over here and use this hue strip right here. Maybe we want sort of a brown color. And we could select our brown color and click OK. So here inside of these small rollouts below the various inputs, you have the various attributes. Again, if you don't want to use a map to drive that particular input, you can come over here and you can make the changes that you desire with a slider, or in this case, a color swatch.
So you can see here by default, just like with the AI standard inside of Maya, the diffuse weight is set at a value of 0.7 so that we get a little bit of absorption. We have our diffuse roughness, our backlighting, and the Fresnel effect here. So I'm actually going to set this back over to the default color of white for right now. And let's collapse diffuse. And again, you'll see here that we have our various specular attributes. Again, these should mimic exactly what we see over in Maya when we're working with the AI standard. Things like specular weight, specular roughness, anisotropy right here so on and so forth. Now these little R buttons to the side, those will reset these values to their default setting. Now, just like in Arnold, if we had some kind of a material where we wanted to use the index of refraction to drive something like Fresnel on our specular reflections, we could actually scroll down here until we find refraction. And if we expand that, you'll notice here there is a Fresnel use as IOR box, where we can now come up and specify an index of refraction, and that will drive the specular reflections here. Now, one word of warning, we do have a opacity color swatch here, and there's even an opacity input up underneath the inputs where you can create a channel. Now inside of Mari, Mari does not natively support transparent meshes. So if we were to come over here and say, I want this mesh to be completely transparent, so that would mean setting our opacity to black, you can see here we just get a black mesh. We don't get a completely transparent mesh. So that is one limitation of Mari as of right now. So. Let's go ahead and uncheck a few of these here, reset these back to their default values. And let's go ahead and scroll down. Again, just like the AI standard, we have things like subsurface scattering, emission, bump, and so on and so forth. Now we also have some display features down here, and this is where I want to talk to you a little bit about how Mari handles lighting. Inside the Mari canvas, we have three different lighting modes. We have flat lighting, we have basic lighting, and we have full lighting. What we're looking at right now is full lighting. I'm actually going to come in here and bring in just a bit of specular highlight on our creature here. Let me just turn off that Fresnel. There we go. Now we've got some nice specular reflections there. So when you're working inside of Mari's canvas, those three buttons to, that control the three lighting modes are right up here. So there's flat lighting, there's basic lighting, and there is full lighting. You can see basic lighting is basically just lacking the specular reflections. Now we can also switch between these three lighting modes using the F1, the F2, and the F3 keys on our keyboard. Pretty simple to remember. Now what about our lights inside of Mari? We look a little bit at these I think previously, but let me just go ahead and right click on my toolbars and open up my lighting palette. There it is. You'll notice that Mari has four point lights that it utilizes as light sources. And we also have this environment light right here. The environment light is where you can plug in an image if you want to use image-based lighting. And there are a few defaults. If you click on this X right here, you will see we can use any of these, or we could simply drag an image right over here to this box, and it would basically use that HDR for us. Now what I wanted to point out to you about the lighting inside of Mari is it's not using a quadratic falloff, so it's not physically accurate, unless we come over here underneath our AI standard shader, and we look at this light falloff here. You can see we can change this from constant to quadratic. And you can see when I do that, everything gets a bit dimmer. Now, if this is not enough illumination for you to create your textures, you can always come over here to the individual lights and select them inside the lights palette, and you can drive up the intensity of those lights. Now, we have some other things down here inside of our display features. I'm going to just bump this up to, say, a value of 5. There we go. We have our decay rate. We have our ambient occlusion amount. Now, this is some, a feature that Mari has. If we came up to objects and chose ambient occlusion, Mari would run a calculation for ambient occlusion to be displayed here in the canvas. Now, that's not baked into our textures or output to a channel in any way. It's purely for display purposes. 
this ambient occlusion slider right here would control the appearance of that. And once we've started creating our textures, we have the ability to come over and look at them based on AOVs. If we just wanted to look at the specular AOV or the reflection AOV and so on and so forth. So this is going to be Mari's AI standard shader or Mari's implementation of that shader. And if you're rendering inside of Maya with Arnold, this is the shader you should use inside of Mari. All right, great. Let's go ahead and move on to our next clip and learn about Mari channels and Mari layers.